You know, sometimes these repairs are just too funny. Welcome back to the golf shop. Jim McClary, most water certified club maker, club fitter. If you would, swing and hit that bell down at the bottom. That way you get more of these videos when they drop. And if you would, check out my other social platforms, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at McGolf Custom Clubs or IA McGolf. That way you get to see more of what's going on in the shop. So we really have a, a I said it was funny, but it's funny to me, but it's not going to be funny to anybody else. In that Ping in their ISI territory came up with the I-3 as well. And they had a special ferrule that went into them. And the ferrule was extraordinarily different than anything else that was out there. It looked a little something like that. All right, a little something like that. Now, as you can imagine, when trying to pull a shaft and not ruining that, which is nothing more than a big giant plastic piece, without destroying the ferrule. So how did you do it? Therein lies the case. Just so happens, a golfer brought me in an ISI with that, an I3 looking like that, and then another one looking like this, all broke. So what we have here is a way to communicate. We're gonna show you how to fix these in all three methods now. And I'm gonna show you some an installment trick if you ever to have one of these. So you have to wait towards the end because we're gonna install them as well. So let's go over to the bench. So this one is the one that's probably in the best shape of them all. We will do that one last. This one obviously is the worst shape as far as being there, but not being there. And then this guy just has some stuff in the bottom to get rid of. And we're gonna start with this guy first. We'll take a look, we got some, some sky marks and some of them are down into the paint. We're not gonna be able to fix all of that, but we'll give it a nice little shine when we're in here. I'm gonna introduce you to another club making tool that basically is in every house for the most part and show you how to get that out. But as we get started, gotta have some gloves. We're gonna use the butane torch. We're gonna use a drill and the new one, the Dremel tool. Okay, and we're gonna have a pair of pliers. So in this one, because it is plastic, we are gonna get the thing warm or malleable in order to be able to, we're gonna to have to just basically drill some of this out and then we're gonna clean it with the, with the Dremel tool. All right, so we're gonna go up to a slightly larger drill bit just to get started. So let's get some heat going. Now with this particular instance, we want to just get right down in there. So just boiling in there. And then to let it loosen it up down in the outside. hot, we're going to set this guy down and drill it out. See the bottom of it came basically out, but all that stuff in there is nothing more than junk to get in the way. And that's the part we got to clean out. Hence the Dremel tool. And we turn this guy on. We don't go all the way and we don't go. As you, as you can see why. What I like doing is I get about two on a two or three setting, just enough to get it going because I don't want to really dig. I'm looking to remove metal, but not dig on the metal. So I'm gonna get in there like this. see with the improvement we've already made just by a couple of passes and we're gonna make a cut I'm gonna in order for this to come out easier we're going to heat it again and all this is is basically glue that I'm just trying to remove in some residual and I can't get real close because the it takes the air away There, 
Now we're going to do one more clean out of it. This time with a brush. This is one of those uh, half inch brushes you can get at any local hardware store for plumbing. We're getting closer. It's almost cleaned out. Now I'm going to employ the brush on the on the drill. There we go. Now if you look in there, back in the corners, there's a little something something, and that's the big trick down in this area here. See back, I don't know if you can see back in there or not. There you go, right down in here. That's where a lot of the problems lie when you gotta put in the ferrule. So we gotta concentrate in there just a little bit more. Aha, got it. If we revisit this, in those areas that were in there. I had to use an awl in order to basically scrape it out. A little more heat than it was there. Now, the thing you gotta be very, very wary of is that the, everything that you see on the top here is exposed. So if you scratch it, it's scratched forever. You can't cover it with a ferrule. So you have to be very, very, very delicate when you're getting in there. So now I'm gonna take it to the, the buffing wheel and we're gonna see if we can't make this look a little bit better. All right, I think we might have done something a little bit better. Nice and clean, nice and shiny, nice and shiny, so I can give you a comparison, basically. Start with that, and then the bottom looks like that. The bottom looks like that. Now, there's something else you need to know about the I-3 in that where the I-3 label is, that's a swing weight area. See how that's a deep port here? So there's some weight in there, and this came out. So this is much, much lighter than that one. That could affect the way that it plays, could affect the way that it makes the ball go up in the air because the more you put the weight back, right, the more that the ball wants to travel up. But now we're ready to receive that one. So now we need to move on to the next one. That one, broken. This one's gonna take a little bit a more barbaric approach in that we're gonna heat all the way around it. We're gonna just try and pull it out. And if we can't pull it out, we're just gonna drill it out. Enough. I tried to get a lot of heat put into it and let's see if I get lucky enough. I got to get a little leverage so I got to pull it. I got to pull that guy back towards me and here it comes. Voila, that's how you do it. Now while there's heat in there, we're going to bring back the drill just to see whether or not we can get it all that way as soon as I can get it to hold on. All right, let's get after some of this. And again, it's nice and clean out there for the most part. I'm gonna have to get the other, the Dremel out there at the bottom. And again, I got one corner, but the other corner still needs a little help. And see, now we have the bottom out of it, nice and clean in that neck of the woods. We got the back end cleaned out, ready to go to the buffer. And there you go. Not too bad, right? All that monk that's, that acquires around there just because of the way of the design. Nice and shiny, we got most of it taken off. I've got a little bit of scratch right there. I think it's too deep. I'm gonna try and lean on it a little bit more and see if I can get rid of it. But outside of that, looking pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna get it, so I don't wanna ruin too much of the outer exterior of it. So that we're gonna leave it like that, ready for the next one. Well, what's the difference with this guy? Well, number one, you can see that we've got a lot of we got a lot of toe marks, meaning that the guy's cutting across the ball pretty good. And that's going to be a uh, you know we're just going to clean it up, but it's going to be down to the paint. It's going to look a little bit better. The face is a little taller, obviously, than the the I threes, and it should be because it's a driver and the typical ping bottom. So you know this guy's been used quite a bit, as it's also missing the weight. So now. We're going to do the same thing. It's going to take a little more time because the head's a little bit bigger and quite a bit bigger heat sink. So we're going to try this again. All righty. So around the ferrule, 
And you want to keep it moving because the paint will burn even with the smaller flame. And it's being precise, so you know, 20 seconds anywhere, and then it gives it a chance for the heat to sink in there. Now, obviously, we've gone all the way around, right? So the real question is, why do you do the bottom? Why do you do the bottom? We go to install it, I'll tell you a little bit later. Put it down in the show notes if you know it right now. And let's see if we can't pull it out with the pliers again. Again, I gotta go off camera in order to make this happen so I have some more, so I have some more leverage because pulling it out here just won't work. All right, this guy's being stubborn. You can see I've got it pulled, but now I'm gonna have to start using some drill in order to get it out. And just like you saw, when I went to drill, it went to face it, so I gotta smooth it out. All right, so I gave myself a smooth spot to get started. Now you notice how this is all nice and dusty looking, right? That's the shaft, that's not the ferrule. See all the moving stuff, that's the ferrule. Now maybe we might be able to pull it out a little bit. There we go. Well now. Now let's put a little bit more heat in there and see if we can't get it clean. Right, let's pull this guy with the pliers. This is the tricky part because you don't want to be touching the the paint. So you got maybe you get it off in pieces. You start from the inside and pull towards the hole. Maybe we'll go a little more delicate. there that we might be able to get out. Okay, so it's being stubborn. We're gonna have to heat it from the inside now and get this thing loose. Getting closer, getting closer. All right, it looks like I got it all out of there. Oh, there's some lines in there, you see, but that's part of the hosel area. We're going to clean this up. We're going to shine it up and we'll see what we can find. All righty, how about that? Got that. Even got the bottom a little shiny. So now it's time to put them back together. That's the important part. So the first two, the I-series or the I-3 pings were pretty easy to deal with as you saw that, right? They came right out. First one was already missing some stuff and it was nothing more than a general clean out. And the other one, it, it worked with us because it's a little closer to the edge. However, the, the driver was a whole nother story. And if you saw, if you were paying attention or if you didn't skip to a different spot, <laughs> this one's a little tougher to run. Or this one was a little tougher. Now, it, there, it's bigger, right? You can stick your whole finger in there, it goes all the way down. And there's more of it, so there's just more to remove. So that's what makes it more troublesome. And it's bigger, so it's a bigger heat sink, so it dissipates the heat. And the fact that you gotta get a lot of heat in there, you, you run around and you have a real opportunity to burn that. 
And that's the reason why you saw me pulling it out and every once in a while I'd go back and I was polishing it up to make sure that, well, I didn't burn it. So now we're back into the installation. The installation process is gonna be a little different than our normal because it's gonna be two steps. First, we gotta fill the hole and then we gotta fill the hole. Now, it's a big, so what we gotta do is we gotta make it fit. And as you can see, it's not fitting. All right, and that's gonna be, that's gonna take place with sanding. Now on the other ones, there are much, there's a bunch of manufacturers out there and it just so happens I had one from each. And if you look, if I make this go right, if you look, here's one. See if we can get this thing going here. All right, there's one. And it's shiny, there's not a lot to it. And there's some striations in it. And when I mean striations in it, it means it's different colors. And the one I'm used to using is this one. You see how it's got little quadrants on the bottom? All right, and it has more of an original look. However, I only have one of those, but I have two of these. So to make them look good, I'm gonna use these guys, I'm gonna put them in there. The other cool part is, is that they fit. All right, they fit in there pretty good. So they're gonna make a pretty good, uh, they're gonna make a pretty good opening, really. Like most things in gluing, what I have to do is I'm gonna have to rough up this particular area so that it will receive epoxy and not want to come out. We've already cleaned out this side, so we're in pretty good shape there. So that's all we're going to do with that one. Now on this guy, we're going to, if you look, this is the big one, you notice it's got the quadrants, and we're going to sand this down just a little bit more in order for it to fit in flat. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to put the, the head right next to it so we can fit it. So this is just a touch. After three or four pounds, I went from making the ferrule look like that to pounding it in to looking like that. So it's ready to rock and roll. So kind of a review, you want to just make sure that it sticks up just a little bit, that it doesn't go all the way in because it will be loose at that point. You get the glue on it and you pound it this way onto the, can you use a little rubber hammer or a little small plastic hammer, tap it in there, you just got to make sure not getting into that or you can pound it in the ground. Now they're in there really, really tight and we gotta let it glue. Now, this is a two day repair because now you have to shaft it, right? But you can't do anything until this particular glue dries if you're doing it correctly. So we'll run a uh, something in there to rough it up on the inside and just glue in shafts like regular. You know, I'm gonna show you some pictures when it's all said and done, when it's all put together. You know, I was getting ready to end the video with Hey, I'm going to show you some pictures or whatever, something like that. And you know what? I, I went back on some other videos and it just, it's okay, but I decided to shoot a little bit more, right? We put the shaft together into the head. So what, what does that mean? Well, remember we put the, the adapter in there and then we got the shaft going into the adapter. Two day evolution, right? So you have to, you know, rough up the inside of here and prep the shaft just like anything else. And then you have to be very, very careful about not letting any of the, of the epoxy getting out of there. You have to really keep wiping it. It's a one or two or three evolution there. And then you get what you see, right? We got to see a, you know, a nice shiny head that's been buffed out. Of course, there's going to be a few sky marks because it gets right down into the paint. You might be able to cover that up with some Sharpie marker if you just wanted a temporary fix. If not, you're really, really going to be doing the doing the whole paint job. From the side, it doesn't look too bad, except for it's missing its little uh, swing weight port and its label. But again, still not too bad. On the face side, we got it cleaned up. You can see that there's a two color setup where it's gold, they had the gold lines or the copper lines and then black lines at the bottom. So that worked out really, really well. It came, it's just coming out really neat. And then the bottom, we got the bottom very, very shiny using the Acra Fairway Wood Shaft. And we're going to do that with the other ones. I'm just still waiting on the shafts to come in, but that was the point of doing the repair. So hopefully you learn a little something. If you have something like this, you feel like you're getting a little bit out of your depth or something. And I'm getting emails about, you know, guys wanting to try and that's, that's amazing. All right. That's awesome. Just make sure that you take your time, use some good tools and have some fun. All right. And as always, let's your scores go low.